Hi, I'm Derek Fenter, and uh, we're going to be covering Chapter 11 of A.W. Tozer's book, Knowledge of the Holy, for our Tuesday Truths series. Uh, the Chapter 11 uh, discusses the wisdom of God, and in that chapter, he makes a number of points that I'll outline for you first, and then we'll deal with them in a bit more detail. First of all, he says that before truth can actually be there, there must be a person of infinite wisdom. We'll discuss that and look into that. Wisdom, he says, means knowing the best of all goals, the best of all possibilities, and that wisdom knows the best way to get there. God's wisdom is used uh, by him for good and pure ends, and that God shares his wisdom as much as we are able or willing to take it. And then that some of his wisdom remains and probably nearly always will remain mysterious. So let's look at a, a, an illustration that I'd like to use um, in my first slide, which looks at how we talk about certain types of things and in order for them to be understood we need to have certain fixed rules or guidelines so when is a war movie not a war movie or when is a game of soccer not a game of soccer and it comes down to what are often called constitutive rules the rules that make something itself so if you want to play a game of, uh, of soccer with your friends, you will definitely need a round ball and not an oval one. You'll definitely need to mark the goals and you'll definitely need to have two teams that are pay playing toward uh, opposite ends. But you, you may well not need any lines uh, on the ground to mark the size of the field. The size of the field may well vary significantly. And what the ball is made of might well vary significantly. You can see on the slide a number of uh, innovative ways that children in Africa have created footballs for themselves. In a war movie, uh, what are the things that must be there? One of the things I think would suggest is that there has to be an army or two probably. There have to be enemies, there have to be weapons. Uh, if you don't have those things, then you don't have a war movie. If there's just one guy, um, then generally we'd call that a spy movie rather than a war movie. So these illustrations are there to just try and give you a bit of an aha about the fact that there are certain foundational requirements and certain mandatory exclusions uh, in these constitutive rules. It's not a game of soccer if it doesn't have those attributes. It's not a war movie if it doesn't have those attributes. Here what I'm saying is God um, is wise and he made the world. He made it and knowing that can give us more confidence in his wisdom. We might uh, even try thinking of reality um, with a, a model saying he designed it for himself and his creations and he built his ways into the world and us uh, from the ground up. And in a Christian way of understanding reality, God has a far, far better grasp of the workings and the ongoing development of the world than any other person without any exceptions. So um, th there's a basic tenet of reality, is that he understands our reality better than anyone else. That means that he has infinite wisdom. Uh, Toza in his uh, chapter on wisdom says it this way, the idea of God as infinitely wise is at the root of all truth. It is the datum of belief necessary to the soundness of all other beliefs about God. The point here is quite radical and interesting to me. He's saying that uh, 
without God's wisdom, there can be no truth. That the concept of truth for a Christian is really uh, at a, a tertiary level uh, concept. It means that before truth can e emerge, we must have God and a God who is infinitely wise. He understands the constitutive rules of the world and of ourselves. He understands what m makes us, us, what makes truth, truth, and it all comes from him. So we as Christians uh, accept him as infinitely wise, and ba that's based on our meeting with him. Because as Christians, we have to have come into contact with God and we accept him unshakably in our very deepest core as infinitely wise. And if we have that understanding, then we can, uh, we can start to ask, what does that mean for our world? It does mean that he then has the best possible goals for the world and ourselves in mind. He has considered all alternatives and has decided on the best possible ones. So he has both the end and interim goals in mind of how to get there. And he's working toward that end state of affairs in the best of all possible ways. So if we look at uh, Romans 8, 18 to 23, it talks there about God's end, that we as children of God and even creation itself groans and longs for that outcome. The primary message of the book of Revelation, often people are quite confused about Revelation when they read St. John's Revelation, and, but it's very simple. The, the message of the book of Revelation is that God wins and that he will, in spite of all opposition and every obstacle, achieve the best outcome for himself and uh, the human race and creation. Wisdom works out the best possible way to get there. I really like a, a, a scripture that uh, Toza quotes. He says, I will go before you and level the mountains Bronze doors I will shatter, and iron bars I will hack through. God will get us there, will work out ways in spite of any obstacle. Jesus talked a little bit about, the, oh, a lot about this actually, and, uh, but I particularly like what he said in John 16, 13, where he said, the Holy Spirit, knowing the best possible outcomes in the best possible way, will share with you things to come so that you can walk in the wisdom of God. Philippians uh, 1 6 says that there is something that he has begun in you, that he has begun in me, and he is going to achieve the outcome that he has in mind for you, that he will accomplish what he began in you. And then wisdom, uh, unfortunately, can be directed either for good ends or bad. In James 13 to 17, um, I'll read a section there. Uh, in verse 15, it says, such wisdom does not come from above, but is earthy, uh, natural and demonic. And then in verse 17, it contrasts that with the wisdom that comes from, from God. But the wisdom from above is first pure then peaceable, gentle, accommodating, full of mercy and good fruit, and impartial and not hypocritical. Much of history and society today is the battle between these two types of wisdom playing itself out. Satan, his demons and evil or deceived or lost people on the one side, God, his angels and his children on the other. And the good news for God's people is that 
as much as there may be opposition, uh, with God's wisdom triumphs over all. And the assurance in the Bible uh, is that it, his wisdom will triumph in this current fallen world as well as in the, in the wider and broader canvas of all the ages. So we have Paul saying that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but powerful and through God and that they're able to pull down the wisdom and the constructs, the ways of thinking, the uh, patterns that have inculcated themselves into society, that we have ways as the church to infiltrate and change society through God's wisdom. Wisdom comes in lots of different levels. The people who have wisdom lie on a wide continuum, ranging from God, who has infinite wisdom, to those who have practical and uh, enough wisdom for life, so perhaps to be able to build good businesses, be able to build a good family, be able to have good good relationships in uh, in, with friends, with, in, at work, at home, and in the church. And there are those who have too little, the Bible says, and even those who use wisdom for corrupted and base purposes. So what I'd like just to get us to think about levels and to have a bit of an understanding of why sometimes God can't share all of his wisdom with us so I'd like to watch a, a video that was put together by an Australian astrophysicist and it looks at the world beginning with uh, one of his friends who is uh, on the grass in the Google uh, coffee shop in the USA and it zooms out from her right up to the very biggest of all things that human beings know about which is a the network of galaxies that uh, that is postulated in astrophysics and then comes zooming back in all the way from that through the galaxies through uh, our galaxy to our solar system to our earth to and back to to google and back to claire and then it begins looking at her eye and then goes and dives down to the nanoscale of the things that we understand in physics today. So when we look at that, um, certain questions if you uh, become quite difficult. So let's watch that now.
Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed that uh, clip. I certainly have found it fascinating each time I've watched it. And uh, you can see when you think, try and think of all that information and then answer this question for me. Where do you live? So that simple question, which we usually answer quite confidently, if we try to include all the information that was included in that zoom out and zoom in, where do we live? And the, how do we include all that information in a description of where we live? Um, we may look from the very biggest to the very smallest. An interesting fact uh, that you may find as fascinating as I do is that uh, human beings tend on that continuum to fall exactly in the middle of the size of all the things that we know about currently, from the very littlest to the very largest. And uh, another thing you, you might find interesting on that is that uh, you are much, much closer in size to the size of Mount Everest than you are in size to one of your cells in your body. So, um, what's the point of that? Well, again, just trying to give a visual illustration of the fact that there are, it is a very wide continuum of wisdom and that God knows the answers and in all their details. But we don't necessarily need all those details every moment of our lives. Certain amount of wisdom is what we really need in order to live our lives and to be practical. More than that is valuable and incredibly enriching, but not necessarily um, needed. Also, the other thing is we may not be able to understand. Probably few of us watching this video uh, will understand every single concept that was outlined in that zoom in, zoom out uh, um, video. So, uh, that means that although God knows it all, he's not able to share it with you or with me. Um, we are unable to understand absolutely everything that he knows, or, and we're also not necessarily willing. Um, I was discussing a technical specification recently with an engineer and uh, trying to get it correct so that I could publish it on the website before him. And uh, after finally getting the last detail and, and making sure it was correct, he said, that is the longest I've sat still ever. I didn't even sit still that long at school. So there are often times where we're unwilling to, to receive the wisdom which God is prepared to share with us. So God will give us wisdom uh, when we need it. The Bible also talks about those people who don't have wisdom and calls them fools. And the foundation of being a fool for the, for, uh, in the Bible is that fools don't know that God built the world, that he built it around himself, that he built himself into the world and is involved in it and it's and sustaining it that he built us and that when he uh, thinks of outcomes or thinks of ways to live ways to achieve goals his ways are perfect as the psalmist says his ways are the the best ones um, many people will feel that they may be able to come up with better ways or even reject God's ways, uh, at saying that they have discovered better ways to live or to be in the world. But for the Christian, um, we believe, uh, we accept that, right back to our original point of the constitutive rules, that God built this, he knows it, his wisdom and understanding of the world and us means that he understands the best of all possible ways to get to the best of all possible outcomes 
with us. The, um, the, how do we get wisdom? Uh, in in uh, the Bible, it talks about different ways of getting wisdom. There's your own investigation, going and looking and finding. Uh, something like the scientific method would help people to do that. Investigation in the social sciences or just living life and gaining experience will give you some level of wisdom. The other way that the Bible talks about is by receiving it from others. And Proverbs talks a tremendous amount about uh, receiving that wisdom from wise people and hanging about with wise people so that you can learn and, and become wise yourself. And uh, there are others who receive wisdom from demons, uh, Paul uh, and uh, James would, would, uh, would explain, from angels. Um, and so there are lots of people who we might receive wisdom from. But the Bible especially recommends um, right through as a constant theme, actively going and seeking God and deliberately asking and receiving wisdom from him and any wisdom that you receive from God is is interesting in this sense in that it will move you if you receive true wisdom you will move it, wisdom Jesus said is no wisdom at all if it remains in your head and doesn't become a part of your your emotions, your thoughts, your will, your actions, your work, your life, your friendships, your relationships. The wisdom of God is not an academic or mental uh, uh, thing. It is a way of living and moving in his world. Just in the same way that a FIFA rule book uh, with the rules of soccer lying on the table is not a game of soccer. So any wisdom which you may have an academic idea about or which you may think about is not wisdom unless acted upon. And in Matthew, there's that famous story where Jesus illustrates this by the wise and foolish builders. And the one thing which distinguishes the two is actually acting on the wisdom of God. We must acknowledge, though, although God shares with us his wisdom and that his wisdom guides us in life and, um, and helps us, that there are parts of, the wisdom, of God's wisdom that will remain uh, mysterious. Those items we cannot grasp or items that he has not yet shared. If we look in the history of the Bible, there are a number of times where God was active and working on achieving very significant outcomes for the human race, but they were unseen, unnoticed by human beings. We didn't see them. We didn't notice them. We didn't know they were happening. And God only later revealed and explained what they were about. Things like that we would never have been able to see or things like creation. Nobody was there but God. And uh, as he acted uh, in, in accordance with his wisdom to achieve an outcome that he really wanted. The details of Jesus coming, his death and resurrection. The Bible talks about it as a secret which was developing and growing and, and always intended, but at a moment, in time became revealed and it talks about human salvation and the beginning of the church as being things that God had planned and was working towards. Jesus uh, said to the apostles, go into Jerusalem and wait until the Holy Spirit comes. So, And then it became on a particular day obvious what he was talking about. And so it is that there are some things in God's wisdom which either we are not prepared to accept or which are too much for us or which we just don't notice or don't understand. But what does that mean for you? It means his wisdom can help you to know 
where you're headed in your journey through life with Jesus. And that it can, his wisdom helps you to know what to do next. Knowing where you're going, knowing what to do next in order to get there is part of God's wisdom in, active in your life. We have a real fundamental promise in uh, James, where God says, if you trust him, trust him unshakably, then he will share with you his wisdom whenever you ask for it. James 1, 5 to 8 says, but if anyone is deficient in wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all generously and without reprimand, and it will be given to him. The condition, though, is that you truly, honestly, in the very core of yourself, trust him. And that's expressed in verse 6, which says, But he must ask in faith, without doubting. So trusting God with no doubting. The one who doubts, the Bible says, is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. So God's wisdom is infinite. It allows him to see the best possible outcomes uh, of all possible outcomes. It allows him to work out the best possible ways to get there. And God's wisdom is there for you to live with him as he seeks to achieve pure, good and loving ends. And God is prepared to share his wisdom with you if you live in trust with him. And then there are some parts of his wisdom which will always remain mysterious. So you may ask, how do I get wisdom? And on this slide I've tried to illustrate that by just saying, ask. Thanks very much. Thank you.